Hey, I'm Christian. And when I was in high school, I kind of messed up. It was really dumb. Uh, in fact, it was so bad that I'm not gonna tell you what it was. I didn't want anybody to know what happened because it made me feel embarrassed and really like a hypocrite. So eventually, I ended up telling my small group leader and he said that Jesus doesn't just love parts of me, but he loves all of me. I learned that he loves me no matter how badly I mess up. And it really surprised me, but I felt so relieved. Listen, I get it. None of us wants everybody knowing our business, but I needed somebody to know my whole story, including what I've done, because it's not just a mistake or a memory. It's personal. Okay, let's be honest. We've all done something that we knew we shouldn't have done. To the best of my memory, I was a freshman in high school and I got invited to go to the high school with some of my friends after dark. Uh, that kind of sounds sketchy already, but just hang with me. What they didn't tell me is that they knew how to get on top of the high school. So after stacking some trash cans together and climbing up a random ladder, I wound up on top of my high school. But that's not even the crazy part. Cause see, my parents, they wouldn't have found out about that. It was when I came down off of the roof of the high school and started walking through the parking lot and then tossed this random tennis ball that I had found against a car that I was confident was empty. That's when everything changed. All of a sudden, the driver's side door flies open, the interior lights come on, and some random man that, why was he even in the parking lot in the first place? This guy starts chasing after me. I'm running faster still to this day than I've ever ran in my life. This random guy that shouldn't have been in a high school parking lot, like whatever, that's just its own thing. He's chasing after me and then my entire group of friends are chasing after him. I mean, this is a scene from a movie. I just remember hiding in a bush until one of my friend's mom showed up <laughs> to scare this guy away. Like it was that kind of night. And as I was sitting there wondering if somebody was gonna call the police or if this guy was somehow gonna get a hold of me and kill me, I remember thinking, how am I gonna explain this to my parents? I knew in that moment that I had done something that I shouldn't have done. And whether it was like something uh, I did or something that happened in that story or maybe something else that you've experienced, we've all done something that we shouldn't have done. And here's something you already know. When you and I do something we know we shouldn't, we all have the same immediate reaction. We hide, like I hid behind the bush on that fateful night. And here's what I mean. Maybe you've lied about who was at a party and you promised that it was only yourself and a friend who were hanging out. I mean, you were hiding something, right? Or maybe you hacked the system to make sure that your parents didn't get the notification that you failed a test, which is really just hiding the truth. Or you kept secrets in your Snapchat that you pray stay in your DMs and never accidentally post because you have to hide that. Maybe you pretended that your bad decision was all somebody else's idea and not your own, hiding your own responsibility in the situation. Or maybe you kept secrets in your Snapchat that you pray stay in your DMs and never accidentally post because you have to hide that. Or maybe you've pretended that your bad decision was all somebody else's idea and not your own so that you could hide your own responsibility in it. It's all a form of hiding. And this isn't just a you thing. This isn't just a teenager thing. The instinct to hide our failures is an everybody thing. Every adult you know has our own way of hiding when we make mistakes. We all do it and we have since the beginning of time. In fact, Maybe you know that the very first humans made their very first mistake and their very first reaction was to hide. Yeah, it's a thing we all do. And like those very first humans, we all have a tendency, not just to hide from our teachers or our social media followers or our parents, but to hide from God too. And we might have a pretty good reason. Maybe you grew up hearing stories about God being angry, about God destroying or punishing people, and you learned early on to keep your distance from him. Maybe you grew up hearing God is love, but his love felt more like a sliding scale. He loved you more when you were good, but when you weren't, he was disappointed, angry, or even distant. We may have grown up with the idea that there were two categories, good people and bad people. Bad people do bad things, and good people do good things. God likes good people, and God doesn't like bad people. 
It sounds silly and childish when I say it that way, but to some degree, that's the idea that we all work from. However you think about it, by the time we're in high school, most of us have a pretty solid idea that however God reacts when we mess up, it isn't good for us. So we hide, we show up less, we speak up less, we pray less. We keep our distance from God and from his people. It's easy to talk about God's love in theory, but when we've messed up, things get personal and it just feels different. And if that's you, I want you to know that response is normal. If you walked in here feeling like you needed to stay toward the back of the room or keep your distance from other people or stay low key because of something you did or something you said, I get it. And you're welcome to just sit and observe. No one's gonna be mad at you. But I also want you to know there's more to the story. And what we talk about may just change the way you see God and yourself forever. For the past few weeks, we've been looking at the life of this guy named Zacchaeus and this one interaction that he had with Jesus that changed everything. Here's a quick recap of what's going on. Jesus is on his way to the cross. He's already super famous at this point, and he pauses because a guy, Zacchaeus, is sitting up in a tree. Now, Zacchaeus has a reputation for being a pretty bad human. I mean, basically, he's a sellout, a cheat, a liar, and a thief. All of those would have been words that the people who knew him used to describe him. And Jesus looks at that guy, a bad guy, and basically says, come down out of that tree. I'm going to your house and we're gonna throw a party. If that sounds confusing, it's because it was. And the people who saw it were not happy about it. You might even consider them the good people. Let's be honest. We probably would be upset too if we were in that situation. The crowd was filled with people who felt like they had done all the right things. I mean, they had prayed, they had fasted, made sacrifices to God, chosen right instead of wrong. These are the people Zacchaeus had been stealing money from. Many of them had even gone poor because of this very man. And now Jesus is passing through their town and he overlooks all of the, the good people and chooses him, the bad person. Jesus chooses Zacchaeus even before Zacchaeus decides to make right all the wrong that he had done. Nobody liked Zacchaeus. He had a pretty bad reputation as a tax collector of getting over on people and stealing their money. People called him the notorious sinner. <laughs> what a reputation. Pretty much a big screw up. In those days, a tax collector was someone who sold out their friends to the government to make a profit. No one wanted to befriend the tax collectors, much less spend time with them. And here Jesus is doing just that. The best part of the story happened when Zacchaeus came out of the tree. Jesus called his name, knowing full and well exactly what he did for a living. And it was up to Zacchaeus in that moment to decide whether or not he would accept the love that Jesus was giving. He had messed up pretty badly, and he knew that. Luke 19 sets up the story like this. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. When Jesus passed by and called Zacchaeus out in love, Zacchaeus accepted it. Time after time in the Bible, we see that Jesus is constantly seeking those who mess up and extending love and grace to them. Even knowing all that Zacchaeus had done, Jesus refused to hold it against him. Jesus looked at the worst things Zacchaeus had done and realized that there was a great opportunity to destroy feelings of shame and even the guilt that Zacchaeus might have been living with. Another guy in the first century, the Apostle Paul, most likely knew this story well. He met Jesus face to face and spent a ton of time with people who knew Jesus well. I think that's why Paul writes this in a letter to some of the earliest Jesus followers in the city of Rome. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Did you hear that? Nothing. Here's what that means for you. God's love is not a sliding scale or dependent on how good we think we are or how bad we think we are, even if it did cause a permanent situation, even if we kept doing it, even if we said that the last time was going to be the absolute last time, but it really wasn't the last time and we wound up doing it again, even if fill in the blank with whatever it might be, he knows we will fail. He knows we won't always get it right. And even with that knowledge of us, he still loves us. Because of Jesus, God does not hold our past mistakes or even our future failures against us. 
God doesn't look at us differently just because we mess up. God loves us no matter what. You may look at me and say, well, that's great, but you have no clue what I've done. And I'm scared to admit what I've done and even worse, what I even have thought about doing. Yep, same. But think about what that scripture says and what it means. If we know that we can't outrun or outmeasure God's love, what would that change about how personal we thought he was? Jesus, in this moment, is a glimpse of God's love for not just Zacchaeus, but for us too. We sometimes look at how badly we might have messed up and disqualify ourselves from God's love. But what we can learn from what happened to Zacchaeus and his response is that even with what we've done, God still wants to be with us. Through Zacchaeus, I have personally realized that I can trust God with not just the parts of me that do right, but also the parts of me that do wrong. Sometimes we allow ourselves to live in the guilt of shame of one, two, or even a few messed up things that we've done. We judge ourselves and think, God will never forgive me for this. Maybe you hurt somebody. Maybe you wrongfully took advantage of something. Maybe you have a secret that you know you shouldn't keep holding on to, but you're just afraid of what will happen if you let it out. You can either stay in that tree and refuse to accept the love that God gives unconditionally, or you can choose to believe God loves you no matter what. Here are two things you can do to begin to grasp how big and wide and deep and extraordinary God's love is for you. The first one is to name it. Name whatever it is that you feel is separating you from God. Maybe it's a secret or a hurt or taking advantage of a situation. Whatever it is, just name it. Write it on a piece of paper. Tell a trusted adult. Scream it at the top of your lungs driving down the highway. Whatever it is, be honest with yourself about what scares you the most about your biggest mistake. The second thing you can do is to confess it. God is big enough to handle the worst and best parts of our lives. Talk to God about how this past failure makes you feel and ask him to show you in your everyday life how he sees you. I know it's changed my perspective, asking him to do just that. And then accept that Jesus loves you. And that is a fact you can never change. Even though you may go through seasons where you feel distant from God, which I know I do, despite what you might've felt or what you might've done, there is nothing that can separate you from God's love. But the other thing I want us to think about is who did you react more like in this story? Are you a person who's quick to point out the flaws of others or are you like Jesus and quick to show mercy? Every single one of us has a tax collector inside of us, but each of us are also made in God's image and can choose to operate like Jesus did when interacting with Zacchaeus. Just as we are not defined by our greatest failures, neither is anybody else. Living in faith means we're willing to be courageous and trust God with our full self, the good, bad, and indifferent. Every fragment, every broken piece, every lie, every judgment, every insecurity, everything. There's right and there is wrong in the world, but that does not have to define us. What defines us is the love of Jesus. Just because we don't understand how God can love us or anybody else, even with our own brokenness, doesn't mean that love doesn't exist. It may be hard to believe, but it isn't any less real. That, by the way, is one of the reasons that we have small groups. You need a group of people who know you personally and who know your story and who will love you even when you mess up. You need a leader who will be a safe person to talk to when you feel like keeping your distance from God. Small group is where